Welcome back to the Friday, May 29th, 2020 special edition of Pro Wrestling Throwdown. I'm Caleb Black. He's Luke the Big Dog Williams. That's Maddie Max Fury, the in-studio producer. It's time for Today in Wrestling History. Every single week we take the date of that week that we are filming and we find yeah. prudent moments in wrestling's history. We also give out some birthday shout-outs. We give some obituary shout-outs. Yeah. Uh, late great passings of our business. Uh, by the way, the first one would have been the passing of Puffo, Angelo Puffo, in 2010. Macho's daddy. Macho's daddy, the original Puffo. Rest in peace, sir. Uh, great your legacy. Boy, your boys did you proud. Yes, sir. Yes, they did. A uh, happy birthday to. I got a list. We're just going to shoot through it real quick. All right. I got a happy birthday for No Way Jose, the late Supreme, Jake Roberts, Jake the Snake. Sneak. <laughs> Ruin my witty. Crowbar, Scott Armstrong, Danny Davis, and Sarita. Oh, nice. So happy birthday one and all from us here at Pro Wrestling Throwdown. We hope it's filled with joy. We hope you're with your families. We hope you get your cake, your presents, your pie, your, your ice cream, the cookies. Stay healthy and safe. Stay healthy, stay safe, celebrate your birthday. Remember, social distance, wear your mask, wash your hands. We have to sit this close. We can't do this broadcast in masks. That's right. If I was, <laughs> yeah. if I, if I was gonna get sick, I'd already be sick. Yeah, we we we'd have crossed. I mean, I got sick somewhere. earlier. So, <laughs> was that from watching Impact? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Look, I got a bad batch of that Kenny stuff. Oh no. Uh, so some moments in this week or today in wrestling history, some notable ones. The 2008 in 2008, the WWE announced the retirement of the cruiserweight champion. Now that would have been after Hornswoggle <laughs> won the yeah. title, correct? Because uh, it hadn't been defended in so long. I think he, the last time I remember it being defended, now I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure this is accurate, uh, was Hornswoggle beating Chavo Guerrero, because I believe they were doing that gimmick. Yeah, something like that. Uh, he took the title, he went under the ring, and, and then, that was it. Yeah, that and then was we the never last heard of the Cruiserweight of title again. Yeah. You know, one of the things I always loved about that period of SmackDown was that the women's, or the women's championship was featured on Raw. And women from SmackDown would go and compete there sometimes and come back. Yeah. But SmackDown featured the Cruiserweight Championship. Yes. So we had the Cruiserweights on SmackDown, and some of the light heavyweight guys from Raw would go and compete as well. So Which really is kind of how the Cruiserweight title, when it come back, was working, too. Yeah. As it would be on SmackDown. Well, first off, it was on both shows. Yeah. Originally. And then it moved to SmackDown and the 205 Live yeah. show, which now is... NXT, NXT Cruiserweight Championship. Uh, I think it's interesting to note that there's been a resurgence in Cruiserweight's appreciation. I'm WWE. Obviously, the tournament we've been talking about for so long featuring Drake Maverick. Get the fucking win, Drake. Come on, Drake. Come on, Drake. Uh, you know, but that was 12 years ago. Yeah. Wow. And, wow, time is, yeah, it's been that long. I remember when they had the guy that's on the place we won't name anymore uh, was doing the midget thing on, on, uh, oh, yeah. on there where he's bringing in the, I'm sorry, the minis. They were yeah, called the mini, the mini, the mini division. I apologize, <clears throat> but yeah, no, gosh, man, yeah, wow. Uh, another notable moment in pro wrestling history: Madison Square Garden, nineteen seventy-eight, in today. Bruno San Martino and Nikolai Volkov wrestled to the Madison Square Garden curfew time limit draw. How amazing is that to look back in time and be like, "Hey, you can have a show, but you got to be out of here by 11. We gotta clean up everything. We gotta be out of here by eleven. Uh, well, I mean, it just it goes to show that you you know before we considered things like time limits and exceptions. And imagine back in the day, Bruno San Martino, New York City. Oh man, the the mecca. I would have loved the mecca. to have been at one of those events just one time. Bruno and he went to a time limit draw with Nikolai Volkov. Yeah, the guy who WWF at the time. Uh, Basically gave the Bolsheviks, he was the yeah. team with the Bolsheviks, uh, as tag team champions back in 88. Wait, or was it, I think it was Nikita Koloff that he went at this time limit draw, wouldn't that? No, no, no. no. That was Nikolai? Nikita, okay. Nikolai Volkov. <laughs> All right. Um, it, to, for him to be in the main event against Bruno San Martino, and then be relegated to tag teams, and then eventually he played the stooge slave of... Uh, yeah, the Million Dollar Corporation, the million dollar corporation. Where they made one of the, the penny, the yep. cent sign. And then, of course, he passed away it was two years, two years ago. Yeah, years two or three ago. years ago. Uh, it's a shame. Nikolai Volkov was, was a, a killer dude. Uh, his gimmick was tight. I mean, he was yeah. in wrestling till, up until the day he died. Yeah. Uh, what a great, uh, just what a great atmosphere. I would have loved to have seen that match. It's basically my long way around. MSG in the 70s. Bruno was the king of New York. 
He was like the Frank Sinatra of pro wrestling. You had Bruno then. Uh, you had uh, Snooker just Snooker, coming into the business. Yeah. Morocco was around. So I say uh, Don Morocco, man. Uh, Billy Graham. Uh, and, of course, Flair and them would tour the, would, the would, yeah, would start Southern. Coming, yeah. But there was a match. Uh, I don't remember the exact date. It was back around this time where they had the Dusty Rhodes yeah. come in and wrestle uh, Billy Graham. Dusty Rhodes, at the time, was the NWA champion. Yeah. And Billy Graham was the WWWF yeah, champion. Yeah, the, the first incarnation. And they wrestled in Madison Square Garden to a draw. That's insane. That's the way to do it, though. That would that would have the way to do it back then. You could do it. You didn't have to worry about one company going over another company. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I would have loved to have seen that match. Uh, the last thing we're going to touch on... <laughs> Ten years ago today in wrestling history, Hulk Hogan on a radio show reveals that TNA is moving to Monday nights. What a great fucking decision that was. <laughs> yeah, in retrospect, probably not the greatest decision. Uh, and he announced that Rob Van Dam had been signed to him. Yes. You know, we, we, we do, we dog the current impact climate because, again, it's just a difficult product to watch. But TNA in its original incarnation was something special. Even around that time. You know, you still had AJ, you still had Daniels, you had... You Joe, know, Joe, Angle, Sting, Jarrett. Curry Man. Uh, Christian. Yeah, Christian, Christian yeah. at the time. Tyson, Tomko, Rhino, uh, Jeff Ravens, Hardy had Jeff just Hardy. showed back up. I mean, the, uh, you had Beer Money, you know, beer and Fortune, and Lethal. Team 3D. It was fantastic. Yeah, the, the product was good. It, it, it was so much fun, and it was a genuine, viable alternative if they'd have just stayed the course... And didn't try to do what the WWE was doing? Uh, I had mentioned it tonight watching with you. I was like, man, this used to be yeah, the number two company. It was at the time. Company. Like, yeah. This was, for all you AEW fans out there, this was your AEW at the time. Yeah. It was the only people this, that were willing to step to And this was before the big boom in, in, in Americanized Japanese wrestling appreciation. Yeah, it was before the U.S. Div division of... Yeah, before of NJPW became super Ring of Honor wasn't, wasn't accessible yeah, on television Ring of Honor wasn't the time. Huge. I mean, TNA was the go-to show, man. Uh, I still remember the first match they had on their debut episode when they went to Spike TV. It was uh, Apollo versus AJ Styles. It was their opening contest in the first... When it was an hour-long program Dude, on I remember when Thursday it was on night, FS1. Oh, me too. Uh, I remember watching AJ Styles and Raven wrestle to a to a decision mm -hmm. when they did the Yeah, they had time stuff. limits and points and all kinds. Yeah. Uh, TNA used to be good. Obviously, it's not the case anymore. What do you not think TNA anymore. of our history lesson today, or what did you think of the previous incarnations of TNA? What do you think about Bruno San Martino? I don't give a shit what you want to talk about. Yeah. Anyway. Send us an email at prowrestlingthrowdown at gmail.com. Like us at facebook.com slash Pro Wrestling Throwdown at gmail.com. Like, subscribe, leave us a comment down below. We'll get to your comments next week. Stay tuned for Armchair Booking.